Hello, I'm Joe Bodner. I'm in my final semester as a Master of Educational Technology candidate at Boise State University. In this video reflection, I will discuss several artifacts of my ePortfolio. To understand why these artifacts are important to me, let me briefly tell you how I started this journey. In the fall of 2009, my school purchased Promethean boards for the teachers. I quickly immersed myself in learning all I could and soon became a trainer for the rest of our staff. This led me to seek out a way to in further enhance my educational technology skills. In January of 2012, I took my first class in this program. The final project was to create a bumper sticker. I did a play on a classic bumper sticker with the phrase, Tech Happens. This phrase has guided me throughout the program as it helped me to understand that technology was happening whether I was a part of it or not. I decided I wanted to be a part of it. Throughout this program, I took courses to build a foundation of knowledge in educational technology. Every course provided new tools at my disposal. Each was designed for creating, using, assessing, evaluating, or managing many different types of projects. I'm going to look at three of those courses and the tools and projects that best demonstrate what I have learned in this program. This class taught web design using Dreamweaver software. I had no experience with designing web pages and generally had difficulty using software in the past. Since this was an eight-week summer course, I thought my time at Boise State was going to end here. However, I was saved by Dr. Shereen Snelson, despite not having her for this or any of my classes. Dr. Snelson had created video demonstrations for each of the lessons. They provide examples that I would view before each project, then review as needed. For my netiquette page, I wanted to use the word netiquette as an acronym. I did my research and found 10 guidelines that I wanted my students to follow in my classroom. After reading through each of the guidelines and understanding what they meant, they could use the acronym to help remind them through the course of the class. This was the first of several courses that discussed proper etiquette when online. While it was something I had a basic understanding of, prior to this, I was not aware of how important of an issue it was, especially in the online educational setting. Creating these rules has helped me to be a more helpful member of the internet community. My copyright scavenger hunt consisted of three hunts, fair use, the code of best practice, and the Education World Series on copyright and fair use. Using the provided worksheet, the participants would read through the selected websites for the answers. An answer key is provided for them to check their work. This was another project that has made me a better educator. I was fond of saying that teachers were the best thieves. We steal good ideas of other teachers. That's not a bad thing, as it benefits our students. However, what we model is learned by our students. If we expect them to create original works and credit others when they borrow, we need to do likewise. Thanks to this program, I am more conscientious of whose work I sample and ensure I give them their proper credit. My virtual field trip to the Black Hills includes a tour of four locations. Mount Rushmore, the Crazy Horse Memorial, Devil's Tower, and Custer State Park. Each location includes a photo tour, a video tour, questions to answer, and an audio clip. An answer key is provided for students to check their work. For this project, I stepped away from my content area of mathematics. At the time, I thought there was no way I could do a virtual tour of mathematics. 
Since then, I realized that is not true. A virtual tour of mathematics requires some creativity, but it is that creativity that would make the learning more meaningful and more memorable. EdTech 533 came at a time when I needed it most. My experience in EdTech 502 had shown me the value of video lessons. I added video instructions to my lessons by incorporating videos I found on the internet. This allowed me to handle administrative tasks such as taking class roll without losing precious time. I could also observe students to see who was having difficulties, a task not easily accomplished when you're teaching a lesson directly. Incorporating videos into my classroom was a challenge. Due to the nature of our school, access to YouTube is blocked. Therefore, I would have to download at home any videos I wanted to present. Since I work in a year-round school, I do not have the luxury of summer to prepare for the next school year. It would also touch upon possible copyright infringement. Finally, most of the mathematic videos are straightforward, lecture-based, and not very entertaining. In this course, I learned many ways to use YouTube. I created playlist lessons that could organize videos for my students around a central theme. I did a remix video using a mashing of Creative Commons licensed videos to teach a lesson on the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. I designed an interactive quiz via a series of videos using a green screen. This was fun because I developed a character that I hope to do more with in the future, General Mathemus. I created a PowerPoint movie from an idea I developed 15 years ago while math tutoring. One lesson that consistently caused trouble for my, for my students was adding and subtracting negative numbers. My students need to understand the concepts of addition and subtraction and how they relate to one another. One day, Looking at play coins we use, the fact that Lincoln and Jefferson face opposite ways on the penny and the nickel led me to develop this method. There was no way around the YouTube block, but I could resolve the issues of permission and excitement by developing my own videos. It was with that notion in mind that I looked forward to taking EdTech 533. I did not know exactly what to expect but I was still surprised as it surpassed my hopes of what I would learn. My own personal educational philosophy is that I will do whatever it takes for my students to learn. It is the cornerstone of my EdTech 541 project. I incorporate it into my I Am poem. My relative advantage chart was crafted with an eye to my current students who struggle with math. It provides them with many different options for learning. To develop my instructional software Prezi presentation, I needed to research 21st century technology tools available and when they would be appropriate to use. With my Tangrams Day learning activity, I had to determine how to incorporate math into the fields of art, music, and physical education. For many students, relating math to other subjects is difficult and they don't see the need. However, a recent student of mine who struggled with passing the math portion of the GD test was a very gifted artist. I used that to help him make the connections between artistic proportions and mathematical proportions. Once he could relate to the concept, doing the arithmetic was not so hard. I truly believe that each and every one of us needs some sort of adaptive and assistive technology. I never learned to type. I have gotten by fine with my hunt peck method for years, but I would benefit greatly from speech to text software. Being able to integrate adaptive and assistive technology for each individual would be a challenge, but my whatever it takes belief dictates that I need to try. I have incorporated some of these tools in my classroom prior to enrolling in this program and others because of it. I use student response devices to increase student participation immediately upon receiving my interactive whiteboard. I have seen how they encourage my students, many who were not successful in the traditional classroom because they could respond in their own time with anonymity, 
relieving them of the feelings of embarrassment. Computer-based instruction is a tool that I have added because of the recent change to the GD test. Conducting subject-specific classes is not conducive since I no longer have separate classes for each GD subject. My students use several computer-based instruction programs designed to prepare them for the GD test. I can have students working on any one of the four subjects and I'm free to roam around and assist where needed. Even students working on the same subject could be at different levels. No longer do they have to wait for the class to get to the area that they are weak on in order to work on it. As I look back over the last three years, I see so much that I have learned and so much I forgot. With this program coming to an end, the real learning will commence as I add these and future tools to my teaching. As I stated, tech happens, whether I am ready or not. If my school is willing to help by lifting restrictions, that would be great. If not, then I must consider other options because my students are depending on me to do whatever it takes. For the glory of Rome, I salute you.